Brian Kajiyama has never thrown a football. He's never run a route. He's never made a tackle. He is a, a coach, a football coach at the University of Hawaii. What's amazing about this coach, about this man, is that he cannot walk and he cannot talk. Two thousand and seven was a magical season for the Hawaii Warriors. The dreams are all still alive for the Warriors. A perfect regular season. Hawaii is going to go twelve and zero. And an invitation to the Sugar Bowl. But for one of the Hawaii coaches, the trip to New Orleans meant so much more. The team gathers in the stands with their. Sugar Bowl regalia on, and they have a team photo, which is a big, big deal. As we get closer and closer to the stands, I can see that there's no wheelchair access. I, I, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. I say, are you kidding me? What about Brian? And the only thing I could think to do was unhitch his leg and unhitch his arm, pick him up, and carry him up into the stands and then set him next to me. And a coach shared a moment with his players. I was just the guy that picked him up. It's who got picked up and who got included. And that's what was important. For Brian Kajiyama, in his first year as a graduate assistant coach for the Warriors, the 2008 Sugar Bowl would be the first time he ever coached during a Hawaii game. Little did he know, it would also be his last. Brian Kajiyama was born 32 years ago on the Hawaiian island of Oahu. And from the moment he came into the world, he had to fight. When he was born, his lungs collapsed. And um, we were told we can be guarded, be optimistic as to his development. And initially, the concern was just survival. The lack of oxygen paralyzed the left side of Kajiyama's body and left him with cerebral palsy, a brain disorder that limits movement and stripped him of his ability to speak. What he didn't lose was his quick mind and the use of his right arm, which has enabled him to learn and to communicate through a keyboard, translating what he types into a computerized voice. At what point did you say, why'd this happen to me? I had that moment of thinking, why me? But then I quickly turned that question into, why not me? Growing up, Brian, like any young boy, became a huge football fan. And in his case, fittingly, he was a warrior, a Hawaii warrior. Since Hawaii football is really the only game in town, I was a fan since as early as I can remember. And I vividly recall each Saturday during the season where my dad would take me to games with my grandfather or my aunt and uncle and we'd have a great time. Naturally, Kajiyama was drawn to the University of Hawaii, where he enrolled in 1994. And by his senior year, he wasn't just attending games, but practices as well. I had a course with some football players. One of the players actually said, hey, Bright even you should come out to practices. There I would sit outside in the sun and sometimes the rain, just enjoying watching my friends practice. Kajiyama remained a devoted fan, even after graduating in 2001 and pursuing a master's degree in vocational rehabilitation. In 2005, Jeff Reinbold joined the team as a defensive line coach. 
Every morning at 645, I walk onto the practice field, and I'd see this kid in a wheelchair sitting out there with his Hawaii hat on at the end of the practice field. So after about three or four days of that, I said, man, I got to get to know who this guy is. So I went over and I introduced myself, and we started to talk. That conversation turned into a dinner at Reinbold's house, and then into a lasting friendship. Soon, Reinbold was bringing Kajiyama around the coaching offices. By the fall of 2006, Kajiyama was spending much of his time helping the team update its antiquated computer system. Then, one night, after a Hawaii road game, Kajiyama was at home when he got a phone call. We were away at Boise State. Brian was helping us on defense, and we called back and said, hey, the, you know, we're, we're not going to be in the office tomorrow because the plane's busted. With the team grounded in Boise, Kajiyama's mother drove him to the Hawaii football offices to start the routine prep work for the following week's game. Over the phone, Jeff uh, was able to get all the, the info to uh, Brian, and he, he pretty much had all it uh, ready to go as soon as we landed. He stayed up all night to do it. Mother yeah. slept on the couch. What does that say about the guy? Well, it says, uh, says a lot about him. I mean, you know, his heart is a warrior, and that's what I always felt and what we felt. He was one of us. To hear that Brian had been there that whole night, grinding out everything for us, and then Coach gave him the game ball, it was cool. And that was kind of the start of, you know, the Brian saga, when, when he really started becoming that hero in everyone's eyes. From that moment on, when he wasn't in classes, Kajiyama was studying video of the Warriors' next opponent. In the mornings when people come to practice and they don't want to be there, all I really got to say to them is, you know, take a look over there and, and look at that guy in that chair that's there every morning, every practice, doesn't miss anything. Kajiyama's commitment to the team was rewarded the fall of 2007, when he was offered one of the team's two graduate assistant, or GA, coaching positions, making $10,000 a year with full tuition. One of my GAs left, so I said, well, I'll make him a GA. You know, we, he, he, he can run the computer better than all of us. I said, you know, uh, we'll just give him, you know, stuff that we can do in-house, and he can, you know, really help us, and he did. And I went home that night and told my parents, and my mom was a little skeptical and said something like, oh, really? And I told her, you have to trust me. I'm going to be a grad assistant for the Hawaii Warrior football team. And the rest of it is history.